Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's video we are going to look at something we haven't touched at all and that is the cargo compartments of the A320 series and then at the end we'll be looking at cargo fire and how to deal with it. Okay, there's a lot to get through, so let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the Airbus A320 cargo configuration. As you can see, physically speaking, the A320 series has two cargo holds, one in the forward section and one in the rear section. Now these cargo holds are actually pressurized and also temperature controlled. So they're connected to the temperature in the cabin and should in theory have a very similar temperature to what you've set in the cabin. Now the cargo compartments are divided into different sections. As you can see here we have section 1, 3, 4 and 5. Now you may be wondering where is section number 2? Well this is because the A320 series is standardized and the A321 is longer than the A320 and therefore the forward cargo hold is divided into two sections and then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So to make sure that the A320 and A321 are standardized they just skipped the two here and it's only present on the A321 and therefore there's never any confusion which section is located where along the aircraft. Section 5 is usually referred to as the bulk cargo hold. It has a separate door to the other two and is usually used for non-standard items. So if passengers transport things like skis, push chairs or maybe golf bags then they will go into the bulk. The crew often will also use the bulk cargo hold for the crew luggage. This ensures that they don't get offloaded by mistake. If you have several sectors on a day and you have a big bag that is down there, you don't want to put it in the standard sections because there's a risk that somebody will offload the bag and then it is somewhere else uh, by the end of the day. So now let's look at the cargo fire system. So as you can see here, we have a bottle with a fire extinguishing agent and this is connected through some nozzles into the cargo base. So the forward cargo bay has one nozzle, the rear one has two. And the thing you may notice is that there is only one bottle connected to either. So if you have a cargo fire in the forward cargo hold and you use the fire extinguishing bottle, then you have no more extinguishing agent for the rear. This is very important to understand. You have only one bottle dealing with the entire cargo system. Okay, so let's look at all of this on the aircraft. We're here at the forward cargo hold. And one thing that is very important, there's a big difference between cargo holds of airlines that use containers and cargo holds that do not use containers. So here, this airline clearly does not use containers. That's why they have these nets. And if you use containers, they're usually some rollers on the ground. Now the nets are very useful because they show us where exactly the sections are. So if we go inside, you can see here we actually only have one cargo compartment, but it is divided through the nets into different sections. And if you look at the back here, you can see some ventilation and this is for pressurizing the cargo compartment and making sure there's air moving through regulating things like the temperature. Now let's move to the rear of the aircraft and as I mentioned before we have two cargo hold doors. One is for the rear cargo and one is for the bulk. The bulk you can see is much smaller. This is because it's right in the tail section of the aircraft and like I said this is used for non-standard cargo. So 
So if we come back here into the normal cargo hold and we look inside, we can see the different sections and once again we can see some ventilation. Now one thing that's of course very important in aviation is mass and balance. We need to make sure that our aircraft are nicely balanced in terms of weight distribution and so there are procedures on how to load aircraft. I know the Phoenix does everything for you but just in case you're interested on the Airbus A320 you always start with the forward cargo hold until that is full and then move back to section 3, section 4 etc. Whilst on the A319 you actually start the loading at the back and then work your way forward. So it's the opposite between those two aircraft, it's just because of the way the weight is distributed between them. So if you ever come across an aircraft in a simulator that actually asks you to put the cargo in yourself, remember on the A320 you start at the front and on the A319 you start at the back. So now that we have a basic understanding of how the cargo loading and the cargo system works on the aircraft, let's go into cargo smoke. Now as you can probably imagine, cargo smoke is something that is not very nice. It's in an area of the aircraft we have no access to and the only chance we have is this panel here, the cargo smoke panel. Now I can tell you that uh, different aircraft have different kind of panels. The aircraft I fly looks completely different but the principle is always the same. So if we do a test, you can see what comes on here. So if you have a cargo fire or a smoke detected, you obviously get an ECAM message, but in addition, you also get these lights coming on. And these will tell you which cargo compartment has the smoke detected. Down here we have the bottle and you essentially just open the agent and then fire the bottle into the correspondent cargo compartment. Uh, again, be aware that these are two switches for just one bottle. Once it's gone, it's gone. Now should you ever simulate a cargo fire, there are a few things you need to be aware of. First of all, as long as the cargo doors are open, you should never ever use the agent and fire it into the cargo compartment. These things are very hazardous and if people are inside the cargo compartment, it could be very dangerous. Besides, if people are loading and unloading, it's usually better to have them deal with the fire and get the fire brigade to deal with it. If, however, the cargo doors are closed, and this goes for both on the ground and in flight, the procedure is quite different. Obviously, the only way to extinguish the fire is by using the smoke panel in the cockpit, but it is very important that after that the cargo doors remain closed, because what happens is you basically spraying in an agent into this compartment, this compartment is designed to be completely isolated, so it's airtight and it's supposed to be fireproof. This also ensures that none of the smoke gets into the cabin or the cockpit and we want the agent to remain in there and no oxygen to come in contact with the source of the fire. So you fire the bottle into the compartment and you keep the cargo doors closed. You land the aircraft, should you be airborne, and you first disembark all passengers and then, and only then, is the fire brigade allowed to open the cargo compartments. There's two other things I want you to be aware of. The first one is that once you fire a bottle into a cargo compartment, the agent is basically a gas, will stay in the cargo compartment and therefore the fire sensors will still tell you that there is a fire because the sensors are unfortunately sensitive to that gas and it can't extinguish between smoke and that gas. So it's quite possible that you have actually extinguished the fire but the aircraft will continue to tell you that there is a cargo fire. 
The other thing is that Airbus has said that in very extreme cases in terms of humidity, so in areas where there's very high humidity, whilst the cargo doors were open, the cargo fire alarm actually went off. So the smoke detector interpreted all this humidity as cargo smoke. Another reason why you shouldn't just fire in a bottle, especially when loading is in progress, it may actually be a false alarm. Okay, so we have taken off and we are flying along here nicely and uh, let's see if I can get this to work. So we'll go here, we click on manual failures, we select fire and let's say we want a smoke in forward cargo. So let's try that out. And there we are. So this is the warning you get. Smoke, forward, cargo, smoke. First you need to switch on the cabin fans. This makes sense because they recirculate the air and we want to make sure that none of the smoke comes into the cabin or the cockpit. Then we basically put in agent one, so that's the bottle, into the cargo bay. And then it says when on ground, before open cargo doors, packs disembark. So this is what I mentioned to you earlier. Please make sure you do not open the cargo doors until everyone has left the aircraft. Because once you open the doors and oxygen floods back into the cargo compartment, there is of course the possibility that the fire restarts itself. So if we look at the panel up here, so the first thing we need to do is switch off the cabin fans. We've actually discussed all of this in the video about pneumatics. If you haven't watched it, then maybe have a look at that. And then here, like I said before, we have an indication to tell us that in the forward cargo compartment we have some smoke. So this is a guarded switch, which means we would have to confirm it with our colleague and then we basically just fire agent one. So here I guess we have to just hold it for a while and then wait and see what happens. Okay, the fire agent is now in the cargo compartment. As you can see, the smoke warning is still here. This is expected because the fire agent actually triggers the smoke warning itself, but everything else has disappeared from the ECAM. The only thing left is to remind us that when we are on the ground not to open the cargo doors. So if we clear this failure now, we get to the status page and again it tells us that the inop systems are the cabin fans. That makes sense because we actually switched uh, them off and the forward cargo vent. This is because once you shoot in the bottles the vent is automatically switched off this makes sense. We don't want the agent to be blown out of the cargo compartment. We want it to stay in there and basically smother the fire. And again, a reminder here that we should wait before opening any of the cargo doors. So we would then remove the status and the procedure would be complete. Of course, very important, land ASAP in red. So that's uh, not just a suggestion. You would set off a Mayday and land at the nearest airport. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it interesting. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best. Bye bye.